Hi, and welcome to another Ray Bradbury Experience Museum virtual session. Today, we're going to be talking to Dr. Sarah Milkovich, and she works for NASA, and she works on the Perseverance rover. So just sit back, and we'll be talking about not only the Red Planet, the Martian Chronicles, but also um, the uh, Mars and why we should go there beyond just reading. Thank you very much. Okay, Dr. Sarah Milkovich, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, it's my great pleasure. Okay, well, uh, so first off, uh, while I always have the guests introduce themselves because they can do it better than I can. Please um, introduce yourselves to the members of the virtual session for the Ray Bradbury Experience Museum. My name is Sarah Milkovich. I am a planetary geologist and science systems engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Um, so what that means is that I am a scientist by training. I have a PhD in planetary geology, but um, I have changed careers from being a pure research scientist and become um, essentially a scientist embedded in the engineering team uh, of a spacecraft. So every spacecraft has an engineering operations team and a science operations team. And the scientists and engineers have to learn how to work together. And my job is to help uh, bridge those two groups, um, help the engineers understand why the scientists want to do certain things, and then help the scientists understand when the engineers say, like, no, really, we're going to break the spacecraft if we do that. So um, <laughs> I am all about trying to get the best possible science return from within our engineering constraints. Um, and I've worked on a, a bunch of different uh, missions, spacecraft missions, most of them uh, at Mars, and uh, the current one is arriving at Mars. Yes. In very not very long, uh, February. Well, we're very honored that you would <laughs> give us your time, considering it's going to be landing very soon. So please tell <laughs> us soon. about the Perseverance and how it's going to be landing. Soon. Yes, uh, the Perseverance rover, which I've actually been working on since 2013. So this, uh, it, you know, in just a few days really is going to be this culmination of, of a huge portion of my of my career. Um, so we are a large rover. We're slightly bigger, slightly heavier than the Curiosity rover. Um, and we are landing February 18th um, using a, the same fundamental sky crane maneuver that Curiosity did. But we have, um, we have a few new pieces of technology on there to allow our landing ellipse to be even smaller than Curiosity's, which allows us a, a, very tight accuracy on our on our landing. And um, we have this terrain relative navigation. We're, we're taking pictures as we come down and comparing the pictures uh, to an onboard map that's already loaded up and ready to go um, of our landing ellipse so that we can avoid landing in bad spots. Um, so. Uh, an engineer likes to go to wants you to land at a safe place on Mars and that's nice and flat and a yeah. geologist wants you to land at an interesting place on Mars and interesting places tend to be the pointy rocks. Um, so this way by having a smaller we want the lips to be as small as possible so we can land someplace safe that's very close to the pointy rocks so we can drive to them. Um, and this whole system actually allows us to land in a um, more challenging, uh, rougher uh, uh, landing area. Um, so our rover is, we're, we're going to a place called Jezero Crater, which is yes, where an ancient, about that. Yeah. an ancient river uh, once flowed into this crater and there's a river delta and um, the minerals that we can detect from orbit 
um, are the types of minerals that form in water, in the presence of water. Um, and now, wait this is, a minute, water uh -huh. on Mars? You're telling ancient us water, water, yes. uh, ancient water, <laughs> ancient on, Mars. water on Mars. So oh, okay. we have been studying Mars for decades and decades um, from with our spacecraft. And we know, so there is water on Mars today in the form of ice. Yes. But liquid water is not stable on the surface. And there's some question about these um, sort of dark seeps that we've observed in cer on certain crater walls and things that, is it salty, briny kind of little flows or is it dust avalanches or what's going on there? And we still don't really know the answer to that, but um, we know from the shapes of the rocks on the surface and the minerals that we see on the surface, ancient Mars actually had a lot of water on the surface. And we're talking about three and a half to four billion years ago. So really old stuff. And what's fascinating is that, so Mars back then, very different from Mars today. Um, there was a magnetic field. There was wa liquid water on the surface for extended periods of time. Um, Earth at that same time, actually the conditions were similar to Mars at that time. So, so in that three and a half to four billion years ago time period, Earth and Mars are very similar and they've essentially evolved in different directions since then. That's the time frame that life started on Earth. So why couldn't it have started on Mars as well? There's nothing that we know that tells us why it couldn't have, life couldn't have started on Mars. So uh, that's what we're all about with this rover. We're going to go to the, um, you know, these, these, the remnants of these ancient, this ancient lake and this ancient river and see if we can find any evidence for ancient life. Now we're not talking about like, you know, we're not talking about dinosaurs or giant lizard people or ice we're warriors. Not if you Brad happen to be a, right right, here, right. Yeah, or ice warriors if you happen to be a Doctor Who fan Ooh, or like very, you're talking to a very big Whovian here. <laughs> and uh, or yeah, or anything that's been described yeah. um, in in imagination. Yeah. The earliest forms of life on Earth were bacteria. And that lasted for an incredibly long time. And the things that we think of when we think of fossils, um, you know, like little, like, like leaves or fish or just bones, like none of that started showing up until about 350 million years ago. So that's a very different time scale than what we're talking about. So what we're looking for are um, subtle patterns in the rocks, in the shapes and in the chemistry of the rocks that tell us that life was present. We've got these things called stromatolites on the earth. And these are um, basically layers of, of algae, like pond scum in yeah. essence. It's bacterial mats that build up and trap dust. And then another mat forms and more dust. And, and it just builds up into these sort of pillow shapes. And those are the oldest, we've, we've found some in, Australia that are 3.4, 3.5 billion years old. Um, and there's some that are still growing and still living in Australia today too, which is pretty cool. So that's the kind of thing that fingers crossed, we're hoping we can find evidence for on Mars. But that's super hard. That's super complicated to do. Yeah. And you know, I liked a lot of us in the spacecraft sort of world, we like to joke that if you put seven scientists in a room together, you have 10 opinions on what's in the data or, you know, what should we do next with this data? Um, so, and, and being able to say that there is or isn't life, the record, the remnants, the, the, you know, potential for ancient life in these rocks is, is a super challenging thing to do. So what we're actually part of what this rover, part of what Perseverance's job is, is to collect samples, to drill uh, small samples of rock and seal them up in tubes and leave those tubes on the surface of Mars. So yeah. go ahead. I have my pencil here. Yes, you're, you're, that is an excellent. It, 
yes, to, <laughs> to show our viewers at home, these are, it, it's literally what you're leaving is the size of a pencil. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, the idea is that um, a future mission can come pick up, can come back and pick up all those pencils that we have left behind and pack them into a box and launch that box up into orbit. And then another mission will come and scoop that up and bring it back to, uh, and drop it off at Earth. So that, um, you know, there's this famous phrase, the extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. And the kind of yeah. proof that we need to know if there is if if there is or isn't evidence of past life in these rocks is the kind of measurements that you have to take with uh, laboratory instruments here on Earth that we can't you know you can't miniaturize and then make robust enough to withstand launch and traveling through space and landing on Mars you have to do it here so okay. we're the first step of sample so, return and it's uh it's it's super exciting. <laughs> It's very exciting. So just to, to give everyone a picture at home to compare to where they can find samples like this on the earth, just to show how kind of hard it is to find on earth, you have to go to Australia to find something to find similar. something that that's that old. So um, one of the big differences yeah. between the two planets is yeah. that we have plate tectonics on the earth. Yeah. And so that recycles the crust. That's the volcanoes and the yeah. subduction zones. Um, so our the surface of the Earth is is relatively young, and there's these tiny pockets um, in in certain places. And Australia is one, and um, I think there's some in Canada and just a few places around the planet that has this really ancient crust. Um, Mars, because it's smaller, that's part of the big the, the, the difference in how the two planets evolved. Mars didn't develop plate tectonics. So its ancient crust is all still there. So there's a possibility that we might um, have better luck unraveling that very beginning time period. What, what is it like on a planet, on an Earth-like planet at that very beginning time period by looking at Mars? Um, than Earth. So if, so if we go to Mars and we don't find any evidence of ancient life, then that tells us we're missing key information about the conditions that life evolved under. And so then we, that will then inform us about Earth's early history as well, which is something that I always find mind boggling that yeah. we might learn, you know, this idea of you have to go so far away to learn about your own planet but um we've seen this over old, and over the old notion you have to you have to go away from home to learn something about yourself that yes really we're going are. we're going very far, <laughs> far. Away from home. We're just going <laughs> billions of miles away <laughs> okay so you also have i am told a ray bradbury connection well you told me <laughs> i am told from yourself from that my, ray email. bradbury spoke at your commencement yes he did yes. he uh i graduated i got my undergraduate uh, degree from caltech california institute of technology and he yeah. was our commencement speaker um and i remember a few you know it was it's kind of a, of a foggy memory for a multitude of reasons but uh the, uh, he he talked a lot about how he got his start and how he would go to the library and and basically rent a typewriter and that's how he got his start and this this idea of perseverance and sticking with it and and following through um, was something that he talked about which then is fun because that's the name of our rover is perseverance that's um, and I also remember that he specifically said this to the 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 graduating phd students but i it was it's a it's a image i have carried with me ever since which is he told them all to go home that night and call up everyone who'd ever told them that they couldn't do it and to tell them to go to hell and <laughs> that's just a very ray bradbury <laughs> like that's who he was <laughs> well because there's the great story about ray of when he said that when he was talking with some people and he said that 
they, the people were telling him, oh, we'll never go to the moon. He took all their phone numbers. And the night we landed on the moon, he called them all up. And they were just like, oh my God, that son of a bit. Sorry. Yeah, you know, that he, he followed through on it. Yes. That, that's the type of person he was. <laughs> um, so, you know, and, you know, Ray was a big supporter on that we, you know, do need to go to the stars. We need to, of course, Ray was bringing us there in a poetic sense, um, you know, with, with the book, The Martian Chronicles. And he was saying, you know, we would find out more about ourselves in The Martian Chronicles when we get there and who we really are, you know, metaphorically. But it, it's ironic that, scientifically we're going to find out more about ourselves when we do get there and in the humanity so it, you are honoring ray's work by what you are doing so thank you that's that's a for fabulous what you are doing and, and that's <laughs> and, and what you are doing in there one so of the we, one of the things um about oh, you know the it takes a huge team of people to make these things work yeah. you know you you talking about learning about ourselves um we have had thousands of engineers working to design and build and test and launch this rover and we currently have a little over 450 scientists on our science team and they're from all around the world and we have to learn how to work together um, and to adapt to you know different communication styles, different cultural working styles, different time zones, and then COVID and, and COVID. everybody working on top yeah. of that. <laughs> so it really is any one of these uh, spacecraft really has this huge community behind it. And, and, you know, so anytime you see a picture of the surface of Mars, whether it's from, from the surface or from orbit, that one picture took a lot of people working together uh, to to cause to come into being. And um, and so I, I like to think that that's also part of, you know, we've all been inspired in some way um, by not just the science, but also the science fiction and the the stories that have been told. Um, and, and we're all, you know, kind of trying to live up to that as well. Thank you. And, you know, to anyone out there that's watching this that may say oh i've been doing something and it may take a year may take two years it may take three years you know just think about that little pencil out there that's waiting and and, and it's going to have to wait for you know a couple of groups of pencils it's going to have to wait for how you know however many years for another rocket to come through to pick up and how many people are working for that to pick that up it, it takes time and it takes you know, there's a reason the rover is called Perseverance, you know, and it's, um, yeah, I want to thank you for your perseverance. Uh, I want to thank you for sharing. I want to thank you for sharing your story. Um, and, you know, I, you know, you, I don't want to take up too much of your time because it's such go time for you right now that the fact that you shared so much time with, with us right now, <laughs> Please tell everyone the dates of when the Perseverance is landing. So we're landing uh, February, let's see, it's like 1230 Pacific time on February 18th. Yes. And everything will be, we're, yeah, 1230 ish. We don't, you know, fingers crossed. That's all going to, yeah. it's, it's going to land. Um, the everything is going to be streaming. Um, there's NASA is going to have uh, coverage, so everybody can follow along. Um, and then we will be will be spending the first uh, couple months doing a lot of checkouts. You know, you you got to unpack and you got to make sure everything arrived okay. Um, we have a helicopter that we're going to fly, also called Ingenuity. Um, and then once we get through through that, then the science adventure really starts. Um, and all of the pictures that we take are going to go right on our website, mars.nasa.gov slash mars2020. And uh, so I hope everybody uh, can, can come follow along with us. Excellent. 
Well, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing. And I encourage everyone to not only watch the landing of the perseverance, but follow the progress as it goes along and find out where we are coming from as we go to Mars to find out more about ourselves. Dr. Sarah, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for your support and to find out more about these virtual sessions, check out the Ray Bradbury Experience Museum in Waukegan, Illinois. Thank you so much. Thank you.